Task Force D teammates and families, these are extraordinary times for First Army, the entire Department of Defense, and our nation. The COVID-19 pandemic is now impacting every state in America and thus affecting the First Army soldiers, civilians, and families we have geographically dispersed across every part of our country. From Joint Base Lewis McCord all the way down to Fort Stewart, Georgia, and many areas in between. I have often talked about connected leadership, and I recognize it's hard to feel connected when we cannot gather together in conference rooms, at hails and farewells, and simply in a headquarters that would normally be bustling as we dive into another work week. With that in mind, Command Sergeant Major Sims and I want to reach out to all of you to thank you for your service, your leadership, and your resilience during these difficult times. We want everyone to know our number one priority right now is simple, you. The health of our soldiers, civilians, and families is paramount. And we will continue to ensure our personnel have the most up-to-date information on appropriate measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The guidance from the medical experts has been uniform. Social distancing is critical. To that end, we continue to support telework as, for as many of our teammates as possible. But distance does not mean disconnect. And Sergeant Major Sims and I want everyone to know we are here for you. We understand people are unsettled right now with so much uncertainty about how this virus will progress and when life will return to normal. We share your concerns. I have a father who works in a hospital in South Carolina and parents who are both in the high risk age group. Sergeant Major Sims has family, including a brand new grandson in Washington State one of the hardest hit regions of the country. We recognize that we all have a lot on our minds and our hearts these days. Because the First Army footprint is so wide, our soldiers, civilians, and families may have very different situations where they live and work. Some areas of our country are on high alert. Others may move there in the coming days and weeks. But none of us are immune to the upheaval our country feels today. Regardless of where you may be, it remains our sacred oath to protect this nation. The rapid spread of COVID-19 illustrates that each of our behavior affects the health and well-being of those around us. For our part, we promise open and honest communication. We have added a COVID-19 button to the First Army Shared Point portal and are updating it frequently. Keep watching for updates here. The surgeon will be sharing new information as he gets it. The chaplain will post a video soon. And our headquarters directors are all working to answer questions and concerns that may arise. Our First Army vision is very simple, to be a team of fit Army professionals enabling total force readiness. It is critically important that we each stay physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually up to the task. The strength of our Army is and always has been our people. During these difficult times, I want to shine a light on our great soldiers. The troops from the Army Corps of Engineers building state-of-the-art field hospitals in New York. The more than 16,000 National Guard soldiers providing emergency response nationwide, as well as over 2,000 Army Reservists. The Army's retired doctors and nurses who are submitting their paperwork to re-enter active duty, proving the term soldier for life is not just a catchy slogan. It may seem a small thing in comparison, but this also includes all of you who are holding in place and staying at home, following your government's guidelines to flatten the curve by lower, lowering rates of transmission, as well as the families who are being patient with inconvenience of circumstances beyond anyone's control. Attitude matters right now. The impact of positive, steady leadership cannot be overstated during these times of fear and uncertainty. Check your battle buddies. Take care of soldiers and families. Set the tone your subordinates are watching. Finally, have compassion for one another. Our teleworkers are fighting to navigate overwhelmed technology platforms. Our mission essential troops are exposing themselves to risk every time they step out the front door. Many of, of us have the added stress of helping kids figure out a homeschool routine or worrying about parents, grandparents, and loved ones most vulnerable to the virus. A great star major once said, the rare quality of being an effective leader can be distilled down to one simple thing, concern for your troops. We all need to remember that now and in the coming weeks. I'll close with this. 
Our historian, Kevin Brathlett, shared a story with us this week about how in 1918, First Army was not only fighting the Moose Argonne Offensive in France, but also battling Spanish influenza. The virus would sweep the globe, much like the way COVID-19 is today. Cities worldwide went on lockdown. Soldiers donned masks as they marched into combat. Doctors and nurses worked overtime, seeking to save and to comfort. But finally, the carnage of World War I drew to an end. The horrible flu was defeated. School children returned to their classrooms. Americans once again gathered without fear, and the Army units returned to their training. Our Army Chief of Staff likes to say winning matters. And indeed, as our nation fights COVID-19, winning is everything. We have defeated many formidable enemies over the past 244 years, and we will win at the point of contact against this virus as well. Winning, Winning matters, matters. Army, Army strong, strong, first indeed.